Hello all, uh, thank you for uh, uh, attending my session and I would like to thank the Data to Bagan team for uh, giving me an opportunity for presenting a couple of sessions today. So uh, the topic that we would see now is regarding the restore points in Synapse Analytics. Uh, before uh, pitching in further, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, this is about me. My name is Vinod Kumar. I'm in Cloud Architect at Presidio. Uh, I'm also a Microsoft Certified Trainer and I uh, speak a lot of uh, uh, in-person events and at virtual events like this. Apart from this, I blog a lot on uh, Azure uh, data, uh, Synapse and uh, Fabric recently. So this is my blog address. Uh, do visit if you have time. Okay. So to uh, to explain about the restore points, uh, I think most of you would have been probably familiar about Azure Synapse Analytics, uh, which is a cloud-based data warehouse service uh, that allow you to build a scalable uh, data solution where you can uh, store, process, and analyze a large amount of uh, data uh, all in a single window. Uh, you can uh, create a lot of pipelines. Uh, you can uh, create a Spark notebooks, Spark uh, uh, computes, and then uh, integration with a lot of other uh, softwares, other storages, other uh, cloud vendors, cloud service providers, and then uh, other visualization tools like Power BI and everything. Just to give a brief if you are uh, in case uh, new to Synapse. So restore points are nothing but uh, the data warehousing snapshots it's like a uh, classic database backup if you are from uh, uh, sql server background or uh, any uh, database background you would probably have some idea on what is uh, backup and restore and what cases would we go for backups and restores so similar to that it's the same technology but uh, uh, this uh, works in a different way since uh, this uh, synapse analytics is completely dealing with uh, parallel processing engine uh, uh, dealing with a lot of uh, files and stuff so you can't uh, consider this as a classic uh, database backup where it will give you some backup file or a single file where you can go ahead and restore. This works like the snapshot. First of all, uh, it's completely taken by uh, Synapse and Azure in the background. So you can uh, you can have a freedom uh, on to take uh, on to dictate when to take a backup uh, for user defined uh, uh, restore points, or else uh, automatically. At the background, these restore points will be running for every four hours and will be retained for seven days or 42 restore points, wherein you can uh, use it as a uh, backup in case you want to restore it uh, into a new database or something. Or if you feel uh, uh, you want, uh, you are going to use, uh, if you are planning for some other uh, deployments or some other big, uh, big changes, uh, usually we do it right. We, we would take a backup before uh, touching anything on a database because in case if there is something messed up or uh, uh, you want to take the database to the older version before uh, messing up the database or uh, in case you accidentally deleted uh, or something, in those cases you can always use those user-defined restore points wherein you can go ahead and uh, use uh, create one and then do all your changes or deployment and then if if nothing if something goes out and you want to bring back your old version you can always use this so basically on what cases the restore points is used like i've said a lot about that uh, now like you want to make some deployments or something on those cases and one important uh, uh, cases that where this feature is very much useful uh, is on dr strategy disaster recovery strategy uh, wherein uh, you want to have a copy of copies of backups available all the time so uh, you don't have to uh, you don't have to worry about uh, what if in case if something goes out or something like that because the thing is with as I said before it has uh, it lets you uh, access around seven days of backup 42 restore points and the good thing is you can go ahead and restore it anywhere like you can do a cross subscription restore you can do a cross workspace restore or you can create a, a completely a, a new uh, uh, database into some other name uh, it will let you do it not only that apart from the uh, dr the third point is in case you uh, you want to create a lower environment you you have you want to create a copy of your database into another environment wherein uh, you want to test something out in those cases also this will be useful and uh, uh, in this restore points there is uh, one more uh, uh, one more uh, important thing that, uh, worth noting out is there is another feature called the geo geo restore uh, uh, so wherein uh, you can enable uh, geo backups uh, you have that option that we will see in a while uh, 
uh, you can uh, go ahead and enable those geo, geo backup and restores from there. Uh, uh, how this works is uh, it, it will be running to a bad data center wherein you will be having one uh, one version of uh, backup for 24 hours. So on the RPO would be for 24 hours. So uh, and uh, the RTO, when you talk about the RTO for geo backups, that will be totally depending upon uh, the data size because this is an, again, uh, it's a data moment operation. So it completely depends upon your data size. So it will it will hold only one latest backup for the past 24 hours. Uh, so you can go ahead and uh, use in any other region. So why, why should we have this option at all? Because we have restore points. Why should we have uh, geo backup under restore? This is particularly useful. Uh, for example, uh, uh, if your uh, uh, if your entire uh, dedicated uh, SQL pool it's, it itself is not accessible, so you cannot go inside and search for your restore points and go ahead uh, with the restoration. If that is uh, that is the case where you 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 are unable to do a restore access the restore points uh, or something like that. In those cases, you can uh, uh, if the geo backups were enabled, you can recover the entire dedicated pool. Uh, to your uh, pad as your region if your primary data center is unavailable that is one case if uh, uh, in some cases if if you can't access your uh, uh, primary region at all primary data center at all uh, in those cases you can you don't have to wait for something you can go ahead and create it in somewhere uh, some other region in this in those cases it is very much useful the same uh, the two things that have, uh, we just spoke about that has been listed over here so and apart from this uh, uh, you can always have an option to list the restore points available. Uh, what are the restore points uh, that is uh, available for me to access? All this can be done uh, via portal, uh, PowerShell, uh, that, that we will see in a bit. And this is something about uh, geo backups and uh, DR uh, strategy. Geo backups are particularly useful with uh, DR. Uh, if, it, if in case your entire region itself is gone, as I said before, this is very helpful. Uh, the thing is, you can have only one uh, copy of your uh, 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 geo backup. So the latest copy, only the latest copy will be maintained. So this is this is here again. Uh, you can also access it and see your uh, restore available restore points via query from your Synapse Studio or, or through your uh, SQL. Um, uh, you can run your SQL and find out what are the, your available restore points. Okay, uh, now let's see in action how the restore points work. Uh, so I'm in uh, Synapse workspace. So I'm going into the SQL pools. I have a dedicated pool already created for this. I'm starting with some basic DWs. So see, there is an option called new restore point. This, and you can create like just restore point. This is a user defined uh, uh, restore point. So, uh, you, which you can create ad hoc. Uh, you don't have to uh, uh, rely completely upon the system defined uh, restore point, which we will see in a bit. But this is how basically you would create a user defined restore point before you, for, uh, if you are going to do any activity. For safety purpose, you can take a, it just like a backup. So, yes, it has got created. Now, if you want to check uh, the list of uh, available restore points. There is one way that you could do is one easy way through portal is if you give restore that it will show you it will first ask you the database uh, the dedicated pool name that you are going to uh, create with and the workspace name and all other details and then if you select this because this is the source from which you are going to pick the database restore point and going to create a duplicate copy of it in somewhere else. So this will list out all your uh, available restore points. This is one of the easiest ways uh, for you to uh, list out uh, the available restore points. For example, I am trying to create, I'm not going to create, I'm just uh, showing you how to do it. Second dedicated pool, use defined restore points. I'm just pretending that I'm going to create a new dedicated pool. And then see, you could see here the ones that we created. This is the one which I created yesterday, and this restore point is the one which I created just now. So if I select it now, you can go ahead and select whatever the DWs you want. Or if you want to create in a, some other workspace, yes, you can do it. Performance level, what you want it is asking. Okay. Workspace name, and then I am selecting some, uh, bigger or uh, 200 or something. 
then if I'm going to restore so this will start restoring the database meanwhile while it is getting uh, restored let us see the system uh, restore points This is the simplest way that you could see uh, what are the restore points available. So now, if you if you go in there, you could see the what are the available restore points listed over here. So uh, since this is an uh, system defined restore points, as I said you before, it, this will run every four hours. So the earliest one available is. Uh, first of uh, Feb that is on yesterday and then the newest is today uh, but you would wonder I told you before that it would be available for seven uh, days and then 42 restore points but we could see only one day before the thing is I've passed uh, passed the uh, dedicated pool frequently so this is one of the reason which I pointed out earlier if you pass it or if you if you don't uh, run the dedicated pool uh, uh, continuously the restore points will not be able to pick up to run the uh, to uh, create the restore points this is why i'm see i'm not seeing seven days worth of uh, restore points here so if you have seven days of worth you can go ahead and sell it whatever days you want first and then it will if you list out see on first i have two two times the system has run uh, the restore points approximately around four hours separate uh, same here but it since it was passed it was only one day available so if you want, if you go ahead and again the same thing, you have the option to uh, move to some other workspace, change the performance tires, everything. And then if you go and restore it, that's going to get restored. Since for the interest of time, I'm not creating multiple databases here. So now the uh, dedicated pool has been created successfully. So now when you go to the resource, you could see the second dedicated pool that which we created recently with a higher uh, performance tier. So that is available, you could see here. So this is how we create. And one more thing we could see about us, the geo backup policy, which we spoke about. This is how you will enable uh, geo backup. For instance, the uh, database has been created uh, very uh, uh, just a few seconds ago. You wouldn't see any uh, geo backup uh, here. Once you enable it, now I have enabled it. If I don't pause it in between, or I don't delete it in between, so. I can able to see the uh, geo backup uh, available when I query not here, when I query through uh, after 24 hours because it will run, as I said before, it will run only once in a day. Same way, you can also uh, go and check your uh, restore points, uh, list out the available restore points through PowerShell also. From Cloud Shell, uh, we can use PowerShell and then uh, from there, uh, you can able to see what are the restore points available. So this also can be done. For example, I am running So here, these are the list or, uh, list of uh, restore points that are available for this workspace and then for this uh, database. So if I uh, create a, a new restore point for this new database, second dead pool, so that can also be listed here. Now I'm, I'm, I'm not using it because I haven't created anything yet. So this is how you can uh, get the information for all your restore points and this is how you would be able to restore with your uh, restore points, restore a new dedicated pool with your uh, existing restore points. Hope this helps. Uh, thanks for your time, guys. Thank you all.